everybody, Eric here. Today I want to go over what happened on the Hill Congress, the House today, with the whole GameStop drama, and it's exactly what you would expect. It was a complete mess. Got some highlights here, want to talk about it, share it with everybody. But please first, like, subscribe, share. This stuff's awesome. It's almost funny. No? No, it is funny. All right, let's dig down right into it. All right, so they all went up to the house today. They were all subpoenaed. Uh, let me, a little bit of background. Uh, January 28th-ish, uh, there was this whole, somebody figured out that somebody was shorting GameStop for a lot of money. And what shorting means is you're counting on them going out of business or, or doing really badly. And so you bet against them. And so big, big money, big hedge fund. And somebody figured it out and they posted it in this group on this Reddit thing, which is a forum where you do all this stuff. And everybody started buying it, driving the price up to basically pinch the people that were shorting it and hype the stock. And I think a lot of people lost a lot of money on both sides because the stock has dropped substantially. So guess what? Congress is like, all right, Time to figure out what the heck's going on here because we think a lot of people got hurt. And what happened was some of the places like a company called Robinhood stopped people from trading it. And there's a big conspiracy over the whole thing, whether or not big money made them stop it or what the deal was. But Congress wants to know. And is it exactly what you'd expect? A complete mess. All right. So first of all, we've got this guy. His name's Vlad Tenney. And he is the CEO of Robinhood, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, what's called retail trading, which is you and me on our apps, trading packages out there. And they were the first people to shut down the trading of this stock when this all went down. And they're saying that they were forced to. So you could you could uh, sell it, but you couldn't buy it. Therefore, you had, uh, you, you know, that, that drives the price down. A lot of people lost money. It was a big problem. And so he started talking and I have seen him on Clubhouse. I've seen him on almost every YouTube channel, except for mine, where's the love. Um, and uh, he's pretty robotico. It's the same statement over and over again. He's getting better, but you can tell he's a little uncomfortable. He did his statement, opening statement, which is the same one that we saw absolutely everywhere. And then the questions began. So it started with him and let's watch because they pretty much dumped all over him and wouldn't let him speak. And it was yes or no. And he had no good answers. And it was, if he says, well, as I said in my opening statement, one more time, it may turn into a drinking game. So just prepare yourself. Anyway, here's a quick preview of a couple of seconds of what happened. This was pretty much his whole interview. Customer accounts were reportedly compromised. The firm repeatedly failed to testify its best execution obligations, and it misled its customers regarding its revenue sources. It seems retail investors often get a bad deal at Robinhood. Mr. Tanev, also, while you testified today that, quote, Robinhood's customers benefit greatly from payment for order flow, quote, unquote, in December 2020, the SEC charged Robinhood for not disclosing that it was getting uh, paid to send customer trades to Citadel Securities and other market makers, and for not seeking the best terms for its customers' orders. Robinhood provided such inferior trade prices, it cost your customers over $34 million. Is your testimony after Robinhood paid uh, is it your testimony after Robin had paid the SEC $65 million to settle those charges that this conflict of interest is in your customer's best interest? Yes or no? Chairwoman Waters, first, let me say regulatory compliance is at the center of everything that we do. We've made mistakes in the past. I'm not claiming that. I'm answer yes or no to that question. So Citadel Securities is an important counterparty. Nobody's denying that. The reason that- the Gentlemen, can I answer yes or no? I'm reclaiming my time. Meanwhile, Mr. Griffin, Citadel's role in this event also raises significant questions for policymakers. Citadel Securities pays Robinhood tens of millions of dollars to process trades by Robinhood's customers. This relationship gives Citadel Enterprise 
key non-public information as to direction and volume of trades by retail investors. Your firm makes use of private exchanges called dark pools and other uh, off-exchange trading to trade large sizes without moving the market against you. In fact, at some point last month, 50% of all trades occurred in dark pools or via OTC off exchange trades. Your business strategy is designed intentionally to undermine market transparency. All right, and so the next piece of this puzzle is the people that told him to stop or, or put up more money or, or stop the trading. And this is a big company and his, the CEO is on here as well. His name's uh, uh, Kenneth Griffith. Uh, he's the, uh, the CFO of what's called Citadel Capital. They handle the big money. They do the big investments. And it's where what they say Robin Hood's deal flow goes through. And just so everybody knows, uh, and, and disclosure, I'm just a dude on YouTube, don't know anything, never had a broker's license or anything, but I did work for Charles Schwab when I was uh, 16. Long story there. Um, anyway, uh, you had to pay big money to do trades. And now they're free. As we've learned with Facebook, nothing is free. So how the heck do these things get paid for? Well, companies like Citadel buy what's called the deal flow and the information on these trades. That's why they're free. And Citadel will also happen to be involved in these people that were shorting the deals said, hey, you, you gotta stop. And so that's where the conspiracy stuff comes from. He went on, he's a very seasoned executive, pulled the normal stuff, what you'd expect. Not a whole lot of answers there. Very refined, very, uh, the lawyers uh, definitely prepped him pretty well. Uh, so nothing there. Then the next piece of this whole thing is of course, they brought in the CEO of Reddit, which he just, he really isn't involved here except for providing the platform where people chat. Uh, but he's proud of what they've done here. To be able to do a grassroots movement uh, on his platform, he's just proud. They don't really know why he was there, but he was proud of what was going on and it was his platform. Uh, could have been any platform. And now these things have spread to every platform, Discord, Facebook, you name it. So it's not even just a Reddit thing anymore. Lastly, you have this guy named Keith Gill. Now, Keith Gill kind of set this entire whole thing in motion. And uh, his, uh, I'm trying to figure out his, uh, his Reddit name is Roaring Kitty. And let's just say he is being sued everywhere right now. Uh, there's class action suits, there's, you know, uh, private suits. Basically, he invested a couple of hundred thousand dollars early on in GameStop and then hyped it up through through this campaign on Reddit and, and you know, hey, let, stick it to the man, stick it to the man. Um, turns out he might be the man. What we didn't know at the time is he is a licensed broker uh, that's dealt in securities. He's not an amateur. And uh, that's where the lawsuits are coming from. So he got on here, he looks a little scared. Um, you know, definitely all suited up. All this was done on Zoom. It was hilarious trying to watch everybody work this. Uh, it was almost as funny as the lawyers in the cat video. Everybody muting, talking over each other, echoes everywhere. Uh, it was a blank show if you wanna, if you wanna put it that way. But anyway, he, he looks like a scared kitty instead of, uh, you know, what his screen name is. Um, anyway, he, 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 he ran it all the way up. He made millions. And then he, he's saying he's still a holder. We, nobody knows how much he's sold off or if he's sold off any, but that's why he's getting, getting sued everywhere left and right. Like most things, some of the Congress people and the thing says, look, this is just here for a, a show, a good political show. And that's why this, who knows if anything's going to be come out, come out of this whole, whole thing. But what we learned is, A, this is going to be a series and Congress is calling it the game stop because they couldn't stop yet. They had to stop trading. Um, I don't know if anything's going to come out of this, but there is some concerns. And I think a lot of people are concerned is Citadel controlling the strings if, are they protecting their big clients through this deal flow? Who's really paying for this? I think we're going to see some regulation out of this whole thing and maybe some uh, changes in the market. Hopefully, we don't go back to paying for trades. But at the same time, hopefully there's some uh, protections built in there. If you missed the whole thing, I think I caught most of the highlights. You didn't miss much. It was a typical Congress setting. Uh, time will tell. But 
it was interesting to say the least. Hopefully this is a good quick update. Hopefully you're out there actually working instead of uh, watching uh, you know, this all day. I don't think that uh, besides its entertainment value, it's gonna bring much to the market. Uh, speaking of the market, the market looks awful. This could be the dip that we've been waiting for, but anyway. All right, so thank you for watching. Hopefully this was of value. If it was, please like and subscribe and share. And hopefully you had a little laugh with me today watching this. Have a great day and to the next video. Thank you.